Justin Wasik. I talk about the biggest, the biggest takeaways I found from last week's presser. FYI, one of them is that Johnny Bornstein should be captain. This article is on Soccer on Tap. Of course, links will be in the description. But, oh man, before we get to that, I got I to gotta shout out one thing here that I totally forgot to. Let me fix that. Just a second, folks. Apologies. Making amends. Atoning for my streaming sins. And if you would smash that like button, that would utterly delight us. As would if you would consider donating to the Chicago Fire annual food uh, drive, Fire for Food. We're already at half capacity, $5,416 out of a $10,000 goal. Really impressive, Chicago Fire fans. Jorge, I'll get to that in one just a second here, but uh, greatly appreciate $1 buys three meals. Everybody doing their part before the season begins. We could even smash this goal. Be awesome. So greatly appreciate it if you consider donating. Links in the description. Meanwhile, let's get back to Jorge's comment. I don't know what the, what the rest of chat's thinking, but I am also glad that Jorge Calvo, that, uh, Calvo is gone. Uh, he's, he, it was just hard to, you have to sit this guy. He's also like a large voice in the, in the dressing room to the point where he's captain. And he was a growing problem into what I think were part of the defensive woes of the Chicago Fire. He was very aggressive. He's good at attacking. He's a very good attacking center back. But when it came to defense, a little bit lacking in, in some departments. Uh, his choices, his um, somewhat lazy, lackadaisical nature coming back, uh, and, and just, you know, some of those things. And so it's good that they, they got him out of the way and they brought in Rafa Chicos, which is very exciting. He seems to be a pretty darn decent Bundesliga player. We'll check him out here in a second. But let's get into this article by Justin Wasik. Link in the description. Chicago Fire head coach Endra he Ezra Hendrickson spoke to the press last week. The first time head coach was in Orlando as he leads the Chicago Fire squad through the preseason. On Tap Sports Net was at the virtual press conference and put together the biggest talking points. Here they are in no particular order. Fire put their money where their mouth is, and that's talking about the trade of Casper Prisbilko. Fire's focus has been placed on improving the team's defense, but whoa, well, lo and behold, they when their opportunity arose to add a good in-league striker, one far more proven than Robert Barrich, who was not signed to any team in MLS yet. He was supposed to be able to sign for St. Louis, but they couldn't come to an agreement. But Pris Bilko, proven in MLS, quite successful. In fact, proven next to a second striker, it seems. So We'll see what he can do with John Duran and O4 next to him up top. So, when ONTAP asked if the club's focus was going to switch to the attack, Ezra Hendrickson's answer was a clear, as clear as can be. We've stacked up a lot of defenders, and our focus is now to complement that with some attacking players. Hendrickson said, Hopefully we cross that line with these players that we are looking at shortly. That might be Jordan Shakiri. Be pretty darn awesome. The Fire did cross that line with the signing of Casper Prisbilka. The Fire now have a goal scorer that's proven at the MLS level. It's important to realize, however, that the, with the signing of Prisbilka, it is a sign of progress, but the attack still needs to be bolstered. I think that losing George Mihailovic has set us back another season because here we are still stuck, stuck with Jimenez. And if Jimenez wasn't here, I think that Georgie slots into this midfield so much better. You could let Fed Navarro play that back pivot stick six spot, just like Dax McCarty. Let Georgie Mihailovic play off to the right. Uh, who's our other center mid? Oh, we'll get to that here in a second. Oh, it's um, we'll get to that in a second here. 
Uh, let me know in the chat if you can figure it out. Meanwhile, Bornstein should be captain. Hendrickson did not mince words during his introductory press conference when ONTAP asked what he thought needed improving as the club headed into 2022. Sometimes you need leadership, and you need someone to kind of help bring in those players along. Sort of an extension of the coaching staff, Hendricks was saying. Hendrickson was saying. I think maybe some leadership, some issues that might need fixing as far as the locker room, you know, that could be something that they could look to fix and address. In the same press conference, Hendrickson accidentally referred to Johnny Bornstein returning to the club when discussing leadership, something the club confirmed with an official re-signing a few days later. So it was not confirmed that he was resigned, but bam, there it was, because he probably already had met with Johnny. Hendrickson would not commit to who would be team captain in 2022 this past season. While that should be a team decision, Jonathan Bornstein should be the club's captain in 2022. He is a clear fan favorite, loved and admired by his teammates, and leads by example. There is a reason why the fire brought him back. I think the reason the fire brought him back, I mean, it's like having a bit of a coach on the field. I, I, I definitely agree with you in th that capacity. I don't know how how much your captain cannot be a starter because that is the that is the inherent issue. How much can your captain not start for your team? And if you have Johnny Bornstein as your captain, there's going to be days where you have to slot him in just because he is captain, where he might not be in the best physically fit. Uh, he's, he's 37, 38 years old. He's, he's getting up there. So the argument is he's going to need more days off than he's going to need on. So let's double check on Jonathan Bornstein. Yeah, 37 years old. So I, I expect him to play a few less games. But if this guy is the captain, pretty hard to, to sit him sometimes. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree, chat? Now, if, if it wasn't Bornstein, the real question is who would be captain? Who would start on this team that would work to be captain? Because it couldn't be, it can't be the guys who don't show up to practice sometimes. It can't be the guys who don't uh, show up on time. Phil Tucker chiming in. What's up, chat? No, no Casper, no party. Yeah, it's the new. Uh, no, we don't. I don't know if we have any more Nikos. So no Casper, no party. Casper, the friendly goal, goal scoring. Hopefully he doesn't ghost too much. We just need him to score goals and assist. Be a points getter. What do you guys think about Borny though? I hope we can find a good candidate for captain after this season because Bornstein's gonna be old. I agree, Jorge. I'm just not so sure about making Bornstein a captain if he's not going to be playing all the time. That, that kind of... It, 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 that, I mean, but then again, we're not in the locker room, so stuff to think about. Let me know what else you guys all think in the chat. Meanwhile, more honest growing pains. One of the things that have struck me so far in a limited conversation with Hendrickson is his candor. His, his candor. He has been blunt to the point and has uh, to the point and has not beat around the proverbial bush. In his introductory press intro, introductory uh, press conference, Hendrickson admitted there would be growing pains in 2022. He used the phrase three different times throughout the entire press conference and continued doing so this past week. We have a lot of good players, but they're young inexperienced player so when I talk about growing pains it's just you know how it is with young players sometimes very talented but the curve is up and down the consistency is just not there Hendrickson seems to be taking an approach that places focus on the development on young players that is great and quite honestly necessary for a club like the fire Chicago is a hotbed of talent and local homegrown players should be given a high priority however the club needs to try and make the playoffs this season or at least be competitive you can't do that without a bunch of young players, especially ones who are in. You can't do that with a bunch of young players, especially ones who are inconsistent. The Fire must continue to try to acquire players like Casper Prisbilko veterans who can make an impact now. Meanwhile, Jorge chiming in saying, and he's got great leadership skills, but he just doesn't have the age to help him. Yeah, that, I think that's more about boards, more, more knocks about Bornstein. It's just. His age is a big knock against him, and he's not necessarily going to be starting for you all the time because are the the other question is, are the Fire going to be playing a predominantly three in the man back system where you could slot Bornstein in, kind of like an as Pukwadleta type, you know? Or are you going to be playing more of a four in the back type system where you have a left back, a right back, and two center backs? 
dedicated. Meanwhile, that left back is probably going to be Navarro. 